hope some of you will remember that last week we shared the story of Jephthah. And there was a man who was rejected by his brothers and fled away. Now, when his brothers got themselves into a mess and the whole nation was a mess, they repented and the Lord honored that and brought them out of the trouble. But they, and they went to their brother who they would rejected and said, please come back and lead us. And he forgave his brothers for the horrible things that said about him and done. And he led them into victory. And we, we didn't read the second half of the story because I don't have any answers to that bit at all. Um, but I promised that as we read the story last week, the children and the young people helped us work that through. Um, I promised that we'd just do a little bit of looking today at getting free from rejection. Because I know no one here has ever, ever, ever felt any form of rejection. Um, and, but I thought it would help if we went through some principles of it so that you'd be able to help somebody else. I mean, I am right. No one's... I'm not right. I'm not right. Am I not right? Surely no one's ever rejected. Yeah, I think probably over time... Some of us have been rejected. We've been rejected by people at school, people at work. People have rejected us because of what we look like, what we sound like. You know, we've found different things. People have rejected us because of what we believe. Not that we would ever reject anyone else because of... No, we won't go there. That's another term. Uh, but when we get rejected, when that thing comes, it puts something into our heart. And I have to say that it is a spirit of rejection. And it goes and it digs deep. And it starts to impact the way we think. We get to the stage where we harden ourselves about rejection. And perhaps you might even identify that you actually harden yourself and reject others before they get a chance to reject you. Does anyone recognize that? That you just make sure you don't get in that situation. I'm not going to let them get close to me because those kind of people have rejected me before. And rejection starts building walls in your life. Rejection starts impacting because you start thinking well they rejected me my family rejected me and that those people rejected me these people rejected me people i trusted rejected me people i trusted hurt me i'm not going to let anyone in again and the thing is that it actually means that we start thinking that i'm not going to let god in we start that spirit starts speaking you know, you're not quite good enough for God. You've not quite got it right. It's a lie of the enemy. But I want us just to be able to break free from the spirit of rejection this morning. Now, I had 300 pages of notes, which will probably take about three hours. But praise God, because time's got away, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. <laughs> But when I was just praying about this, and I admit that I, in my life, I recognize that there has been rejection, that I have sensed rejection, I've responded to rejection. And as I was just praying about it, I just said, Lord, just show me that picture of what I've been through. Many of them I feel like I've dealt with. But I just saw this big, long, dark tunnel. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in one of those places where it just seems like you are going down this tunnel and you get a little bit and you suddenly hear the door slam behind you. And you go on further and the door slams. It's almost to say, we don't want you here, crash. We don't want you here, crash. And you get further and further and further down this black tunnel. And eventually you get to the place of say can't do it. I'm going to die if I don't get out of here. 
and you turn and begin to knock on the door and say, I, I need to come back. Has anyone ever sensed that, that desperation of just feeling locked out? Rejection makes you feel locked out. Even from the love of God, it has made you feel locked out. As we do that, I want us to realize, because when you turn and look at that, can anyone see that door? Can you, can you sense that door behind you closing? I just need half a nod. <laughs> because when you go and pull on that door, you suddenly discover that door is locked. But it's like a Yale lock. That it's locked on your side. When you have been rejected and respond, the one who slammed the door is you, not the other person. And when you do it, that door slams shut and the key is needed to get back through. And as I was just praying that through, I, I said, well, you know, how do we get the key, Lord? How do we get that key? And I felt the first thing, the first part of that was actually identifying what the door is, identifying what the rejection is. It was funny, a few weeks ago, some of us were at a meeting here, and I can't remember was it the other Adrian Gal Galvin. Yes. I keep getting the V and the L wrong around. Um, and Adrian was just speaking about, he was actually talking about deliverance. And it just hit me. He said, the first thing you need to do is to identify what it is that you are dealing with. And sometimes we find ourselves feeling rejected and not actually knowing what that door is. Sometimes you just, well, they, that's, and there's so many of them, like this long passage of them, and you almost have to go through them one at a time. But you look at this door and you know that I need a key, but first of all, you've got to know what is the door? But praise God, do you know what? The Holy Spirit is there helping us when we do not know what we are doing. The Holy Spirit is actually saying, ask me and I will show you, I will reveal that door to you. And sometimes we find that that first door is something really minor. You know, I, I went into that room and that person didn't say hello to me. And I felt rejected. Has anyone ever felt rejected by something as silly as that? That somebody just seemed to ignore me when I went in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you find the Lord just said, actually, you need to deal with that one first. There's little tiny ones. And sometimes you're going to get there and find out, well, the way that that teacher at school spoke to me, telling me that I will never achieve anything. The way that speech teacher just made me a fool and everybody else made me feel a fool and I was rejected by it. I don't know what the door is going to be, but the Holy Spirit will show you that door. But, you know, he doesn't show you it to say, oh, I now you know the door. He says, and I'll give you the key to that door. And as we saw with Jephthah last week, the key to unlocking the door is forgiveness. It is as simple as that. We need to come to the stage of each door, taking the key and putting it in the lock and turning it. Amen. That's... The thing is that... Why should we ask for forgiveness when they are the ones that did it? Right? That's not fair. It's not fair in any way, shape, or form. They are the ones that hurt me. They are the ones that abused me. They are the ones that rejected me. They are the ones. And you're telling me that I need to forgive them. 
don't they need to come and say I'm sorry? You know, so many times that person isn't any longer even in a position. You know, I suspect the teacher that was so rude to me when I was five, well, probably 120 now, yeah. and he's not really around. Actually, the funniest story there is that I met this lady. My mother was in hospital in the late 80s, and this lady was in the bed next to her. And do you know what she said to my mom? She said, I know you had four children, but John was my favorite. <laughs> I don't know how you treated the other three. But, you know, it had been for 30 odd years that I had carried the fact that she had written home to mother that this five year old didn't try, was bone idle, and just needed to get a grip, you know, whatever. You know. And I felt rejected by it. But you know what? I was able to come and say, in the name of Jesus, I just come and I release Miss Oglesby from everything that she put on my life. Yeah. She doesn't owe me anything anymore. And that is the key to forgiveness, is being able to say, that person, no matter what they did, they no longer have the right to have an impact on my life. They don't owe me anything anymore. And I just release them from that burden. You know, how many times do we have to do that before we've actually done it? We might to be spiritual and say, well, once it's done, it's done. I mean, has anyone ever noticed that you forgive someone and it comes back? <laughs> yeah? Hello. I know Jesus said, forgive somebody. How many times should I forgive them? So, and actually, sometimes it takes us 70 times 7 until that day when you actually say, actually, they didn't destroy my life. They didn't reject me. I mean, they did reject me, but it wasn't. That's not the fact. I released them from that. And when we're able to do that, we begin to put the key in the lock. But there's something more. Yeah. Because once we have forgiven them, we have the absolute joy of knowing God's love. And Jesus, it's just interesting. I have a sense that when I saw these doors, I, I just sensed Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Who is it that can let him in? You know, that pretty picture by, what's his name, Hunt, had the no, no uh, handle on the outside of the door. Jesus standing at the door and knocking. And the Holy Spirit gives us what it is. And the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to be able to repent and forgive. Amen? Amen. I can't do it on my own. <laughs> but by his spirit, we can. And as we open that door, we can also repent for saying, Lord, I felt that you rejected me. I felt that you had said you didn't want me. And I repent of that. And Lord, I forgive you and I forgive me for being foolish and taking on rejection in such a way that it's impacted my relationship with you. And I really felt that I read it over the kids earlier, that was where I was this morning. That Paul was praying over the church and he was praying that more than anything else, that they would receive. And he said, the prayer that you'll be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in your innermost heart. As we repent and as we forgive, we're able to receive into the very innermost parts of our being his strength. <laughs> And he says, I'm praying that you may know his strength in the innermost parts. And I love Paul's prayers. 
at the two in Ephesians, the one in Colossians, they all have exactly the same thing. He says, I am praying this so that this can happen. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes we pray, Lord, will you do this? And Paul's key there was, I'm praying this. I'm praying that you will be strengthened in your innermost parts because God's going to do that. And because of that, you will know his presence. Amen. That door of unforgiveness that is locked because of your rejection, when you open it, he's saying, come into my presence. Come into my presence. Come in and know me. Yeah. Oh, isn't that neat? And Paul was praying over those people. He was saying, I just pray that you're strengthened in your innermost parts. It just really sense that the last week that we know where our innermost parts are. Right in your belly. Amen. And he's filling us. And we're sensing his presence. And you know, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. In rejection, the last thing you've got is joy. Yeah. 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 But in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. And then Paul just goes on and says, he prays that we may be deeply rooted, that we can comprehend the boundless and unlimitedness love of God. Amen. 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 We just receive what he's praying for us for. Amen. That we are loved by God. He loves us not just a little bit. You know, one of them is as far as the north is from the south, he takes away our sin. But as high and as low, as far and wide, his love is unmeasurable. And when we are stuck with unforgiveness because of rejection, we actually are stopping ourselves receiving the fullness of his love. He loves us and is desperate. God is actually desperate to see us releasing that door so he can come in. Now, in rejection, there may be multiple doors to go through. But it's our call is to just deal with them because we know that on the other side of that door is not facing rejection again, but he's coming into a freshness of his love. You know, when he said that when we're strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we know his presence. But when we're deeply rooted in his love, we can be filled with the fullness to the fullest extent with God himself. I'm desperate to be filled with God. Are you desperate to be filled with God today? Is that your heart's cry? I want to be filled with him. And so we receive the very prayers that are made over us. Praying even as Paul prayed, and we prayed over those kids today, we pray over ourselves that we may be, first of all, strengthened by the Holy Spirit, that we may know his presence. Yeah. And then rooted in that incredible love. He loves you more than you can even imagine. And being rooted in that love, fills us with the fullness of God himself. Amen. Jesus has come knocking on that door when we are prepared to open that door deliberately. And praise God, everything he asks us to do, by his spirit, he gives us the strength to do it. You know, have you ever been in that situation? And I, I remember the horrendous comment somebody made a, a few years ago well I can never forgive that man for what he's done mm -hmm. oh as a Christian you can't actually say that mm -hmm. but that weight of that forgiveness is so bad, big who can blame them but we know that by his love and by his spirit 
he is able to minister in us, giving us the strength to forgive. And when we put that key in the lock and open it for Jesus to come, he overflows us with his love. What had once been a door of rejection becomes a door of access for the love of God. That sounds like a good place to be. Does that sound good to you? Amen. Thank you. Do you want to just stand? I'm going to pray that prayer over each one of us, just as we prayed it over the children. I pray that out of his glorious riches, you will be strengthened by the power, with power, by the working of his spirit in your innermost being. Mm -hmm. That is so that you will be able to know the presence of Christ in your hearts because of your faith in him. I also pray that your lives will be deeply rooted in his love. That you will be so steadfast in that love, like all those who believe in Jesus and who are set apart for his purposes as his saints. You will be able to comprehend something, something of the amazing extent of Christ's love. This love seems boundless and unlimited. And through that love, that you may be filled with the, to the fullest extent with God himself. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I just thank you that by your Holy Spirit, yeah. by your Holy Spirit, you are showing us the places that we need to go, the things that are still hindering our relationship with you. Lord, we thank you. And we come asking for your strength to be able to know how to forgive that by your power in us. Mm. And that we can be absolutely strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Right inside of us. So that we may be in your presence. Lord, I thank you that your presence is in us all the time. Mm -hmm. But we thank you, Lord, that there is also being in your presence. Mm -hmm. Just as you are in us and we are in you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that the geometry in our minds doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But in you, it does. Yes. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you for the, your Holy Spirit rooting us in you. Rooted so deeply. Mm -hmm that your love overflows. And Lord, I just thank you even as we worship this morning, mm -hmm. sensing your love, sensing the power of your love as you reign upon us, your love. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we surrender to you. Surrendering afresh to you this morning.